everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Firstly, I would just like to say that I was so excited this week because my stethoscope arrived and I just love it so much that I decided to wear it in today's video and then I can feel like I'm actually starting medical school. I also have a little update at the end of this video where I talk about why I've decided I'm not going to be doing a video on the GAMSAT. But firstly, the BMAT. The BMAT is an aptitude test used by some universities as part of their application process for medicine, both undergraduate and graduate. It is also used for some other courses, including biomedical science at the University of Oxford. The BMAT is a two hour pen and paper exam. Dictionaries and calculators are not allowed and the tests are usually taken in November. However, they do offer a limited number of test centres for individuals who would like to take the BMAT in September. There are advantages and disadvantages to taking the test in November rather than September and vice versa. Taking the test in November is cheaper than it would be than if you took the test in September. In addition to this, the September test can only be taken in 20 centres across the UK. However, the November test has a much wider range of centres who offer the BMAT. In order to take the November BMAT exam, you must register for the test from the 1st of September and before the 1st of October. As I said, the November exam is cheaper and costs £46. It is also possible to be reimbursed for the cost of the test. So if you think you qualify, you can check on the BMAT website where you can find out more information. If you take your test in November, your scores will automatically be shared with the universities that you have applied to that require the BMAT. If you take the September test, however, you will have to send your results individually to the universities yourself. So how do you apply to take the BMAT? You need to register to take the BMAT at the test centre at which you would like to take the test. If you are a graduate student, I would recommend calling your old college or your old school and asking them if it would be possible to take the BMAT there. If this is not possible, your school or college can apply to become a test centre. It would be better if your school could apply to be a test centre. This is because, although there are other test centres available where you can apply to take the BMAT, they will most likely charge you a fee in addition to the fee that you already have to pay to take the BMAT itself. If that is not possible, you can find a test centre yourself. There is a list of test centres available on the BMAT website. You are only allowed to take the BMAT once per application cycle, so you cannot take both the September and November tests, and you must choose only one. So which universities require the BMAT for 2017 entry? Currently, the only graduate entry courses that require the BMAT are at Oxford University and for the five-year course at Imperial College London. A number of undergraduate medicine courses require the BMAT, and again, a list can be found on the BMAT website. So what does the BMAT test involve? The BMAT test is split into three sections. The first section is an aptitude and skills test. The second section tests your scientific and mathematical knowledge. And the third section is a writing task. In the aptitude and skills section, you have 60 minutes to answer 30 multiple choice questions. These questions require general problem solving, data analysis and critical thinking. The second section, Scientific knowledge and applications requires you to have an understanding of GCSE science, including biology, chemistry and physics. This section is essentially a fast paced knowledge exam in which you have 30 minutes to answer 27 questions. In my opinion, this section was the most time pressured, but also required the most preparation. The third section is a writing task where you have to answer one question out of a choice of three. 
This consists of an essay and you are given 30 minutes to write the essay itself. So how would you prepare for the BMAT? I would recommend that you split your preparation for the BMAT into three sections. The first section would be going over the GCSE science knowledge required for section two. I would highly recommend that you use the BMAT test specification available on their website and go through this specification systematically to ensure that you cover all possible topics that can come up in the BMAT. Hopefully, you will be familiar with the vast majority of the content. However, due to variations in GCSE specifications, there may be some topics that you have not come across or that you only covered at A level or AS level. In addition to this, it is important to remember that you did take your GCSEs quite a while ago, even more so if you are a graduate entry student, and therefore you will almost definitely need to refresh your memory. Having to go over all your GCSE science work, again, can be very frustrating at times. However, stick with it and it will be worth it. The second phase of preparation that I would recommend involves doing practice questions, however, not setting yourself a specific time limit. Personally, I would go through all the questions that you have access to slowly, reading the questions properly and taking your time to fully understand what they are asking, how to answer it and trying your hardest to get the correct answer. In the final phase, you would ideally be doing practice tests. There are plenty of practice tests available on the BMAT website in the form of full past BMAT tests. Make sure you mark your tests to find out which questions you have gotten wrong and then try to figure out why you've got it wrong and how you can help prevent the same error in the future. This will also give you a chance to figure out which areas you are weaker at and therefore give you a chance to improve those areas. So which resources do I recommend when preparing for the BMAT? Personally, I only used three resources for the entirety of my BMAT preparation. Firstly, I used the book Preparing for the BMAT, the Official Guide. This book, as indicated by the title, is the official book for preparing for the BMAT. And as a result, it gives you peace of mind that the information provided in the book is accurate. Although the book is shorter than you would expect, the information included is extremely helpful and personally, I would recommend reading it pretty much from the front cover to the back cover before you do any practice questions or anything like that. The second resource I would recommend was written by the company Get Into Medical School. I mentioned their UK cat book in my last video. The Get Into Medical School 700 BMAT questions was extremely useful when I was preparing for the BMAT. It had more than enough questions to help me practice, but also provided tips and tricks on how I could answer the questions quicker and how I could spot common patterns that BMAT use in their tests. In addition to this, it gave detailed explanations as to how to answer the questions and exactly why the answer is what it is. This was particularly useful in section A, which required problem solving, logic skills, things like that. Thirdly, I used the past papers from the official BMAT website. I printed them all out, I binded them, had a massive pile of BMAT past papers and I just went through them one by one. As I had already completed 700 questions BMAT book, I felt confident enough to give myself the official time limits to take the full tests as practice. This obviously depends on personal preferences and you may decide that you want to reserve a couple of past papers to do untimed and just work your way through slowly but accurately and then have the rest of the past papers to do properly timed or you may be like me in which I just went through all of them properly timed. So given that I took the BMAT a couple of years ago here are some top tips that I would recommend when taking the test. Firstly, don't waste time checking your watch or your clock every 30 seconds to make sure you're on track. Instead, check the clock every three minutes, for example, and check that you've answered five or six questions. This is particularly important for section B, the science and math section, where it is extremely time pressured. And although you do need to make sure you always keep an eye on the clock, you don't want to be wasting time. 
so just check it every couple of minutes or so. My second tip was to try as hard as possible not to completely guess the answer. An educated guess or removing a couple of options by process of elimination can really help improve the probability of you getting the answer correct. If there are some questions that you really don't know the answer to, then leave them and then you can come back to them later if you have time. This leads me on to my next tip, which is at the end of section A and section B, try to leave one minute in which you go through all the questions that you have left blank. Chances are, by this point, you will have no idea what the answers are. And because of this, I would recommend that before you take your test, you choose one letter that you fill in any questions that you don't know the answer to. This is also the case if you are unable to finish a section. For example, if you have five blank questions at the end of a test and you don't know the answers, make sure you just choose one letter at the end. Personally, I chose the letter C and I just filled in C, 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 C if I didn't finish a question. Don't change letter per question, just choose one letter. It's the quickest, it's the easiest and will probably increase your chances. If you leave the question blank, you have absolutely no chance of getting a point. However, if you just fill in a random letter, then you will have at least a 20% chance if there are five choices to the question. My fourth and fifth tips are related mostly to the writing task, section three. For this section, I would highly recommend that you really read the question and understand exactly what they are trying to ask you. Don't try to twist this question to answer it the way that you want to answer it, but really answer what they are asking of you. This is really important, and if you don't answer the question that they are asking, then you are unlikely to get the mark that you deserve. My final tip would be to write neatly and legibly, using correct punctuation and grammar for the writing task. In order to help you do this, I would recommend that you write a plan before you start your essay, so you have your thoughts down and you know which order you want to write the essay in. This will help you avoid errors. Being neat is also important for sections A and B when filling in the multiple choice sheets. Be sure you follow the instructions on what to do if you make a mistake when filling in the answer sheet, but also make sure you are using the writing utensils that they tell you to use. So that concludes my video on the BMAT. As I said, I took it in 2013. In my last UKCAT video, someone commented asking me what I got. So I thought that I would tell you what I got in the BMAT in the video. It is important to note that the BMAT test has actually changed since I took the BMAT. And therefore, my score may not be on par to the average score. In addition to this, the way the BMAT marks is using a bell curve and therefore the scores obviously change every year. However, these were my scores. So for section one, I got 5.1. For section two, I got 5.2. And for the writing task, the quality of my content was a three and the quality of the writing was an A. So there you go, those were my BMAT scores. I had originally planned to do a video on the GAMSAT in addition to this, or perhaps in conjunction with this video. However, I have decided not to do that, mostly because I have no experience of the GAMSAT. I've never taken the GAMSAT. I don't even know anybody who sat the GAMSAT. And as a result of that, I really don't feel comfortable making a video on it. However, if you would like more information on the GAMSAT, I will leave a link in the description box below of the uh, GAMSAT website where I'm sure you will find everything that you need to know. Thank you so much again for watching this video and my videos in general. I really hope they are useful and as I say at the end of every video I am more than open to suggestions and ideas for the sorts of videos that you would like to see. Currently on my list of recommendations I have um, somebody who would like me to do a video on interview preparations, which is something that I will definitely make a video on. My next video will likely be on the personal statement. So if you have any questions related to that, then just again, leave a comment down below and I will respond to it and try to include anything in future videos. Thank you again and I'll see you next time. Bye.